Uh, this is Yuhani Lunda. Hello. Hello. Uh, he's a breeder from Finland. Uh, I would like to speak uh, with him about uh, his ideas uh, in, in selection. Uh, maybe you, I, I maybe I will start like this. We are the group of amateurs in Poland. We we cooperate, uh, try to be treatment free. Uh, do you have any advice for a group like this? What what would you, what would you suggest to, to start? Um, well, um, maybe maybe you should um, think of finding some common place where mm -hmm. you could all keep your bees in, in such um, maybe maybe one um, village or, or mm -hmm. maybe one remote area um, somewhere near forest where there are so few other beekeepers as mm -hmm. possible. Okay. And um, I would, I would, uh, even though I'm selling queens myself, <laughs> I would suggest it that you start with some material which has been tested already. Mm -hmm. So you you win many years of hard work. Yeah. I mean, I started from Primorsky bees, which mm -hmm. were already bred in the mm -hmm. uh, Russia. Uh, and so you, you do this material from Russia? Yeah? No, 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 from from uh, Josef Kola. Ah, okay. Yeah. okay. So I had 2001, I got uh, Primorsky bees from Josef Koller. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I have, uh, so I have uh, other uh, resistant materials, for instance, one Elton Queen, mm -hmm. okay. which is, uh, actually came from Josef Koller, but it's originally mm -hmm. from Eric Stone. So, and even though I have had these um, already tested bee materials, and I have done this for 17 years now, mm -hmm. yeah. I have, I have, I'm not near. The, yeah, but, but do you think that uh, resistance uh, and, and survival is, is, uh, is what you can achieve? Because uh, in my opinion, I see uh, nature as uh, being constantly mm. in balance well, and that's, some, that's, some, yeah. some beasts will die, yeah, they, well, they, will, that, they will not survive that, forever. That's, that's, that's what I was think, uh, speaking today mm -hmm. when I said that when I started this project I thought that there are two options, either the bees survive or they die. Yeah. But there's this third option, and it's very close nature. Yeah. It's very close nature because there's this third option that that 50 percent of your hives die. Yeah. Like no, in the, maybe like not 50, but sometimes 40, 60. And like in the nature, many many swarms, they don't make it big enough yeah. in the in the uh, less rest of the summertime. If the weather is bad in in in, in summer and autumn, they don't make big enough hive. And uh, they they die in winter. So, and but there are always some hives. Mm -hmm. I mean, in nature, it's impossible uh, that uh, one species should should uh, be expanding all the time. There yeah. must be a balance. Yeah, some exactly. die, some 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 born, and so so. Because I, I followed your web page, uh, the part in English, because I don't understand yeah. Finnish at all. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, I followed it, and and uh, what you said about uh, your beekeeping uh, at the presentation, mm -hmm. and. Uh, for me, it's uh, this scenario that, that is in your apiary mm. is quite okay. That every three, four, five years, mm. it's a some major collapse, mm. but but you are self so, so sufficient. You can reveal it from from survivors, and I would say that nature works like that. that, yeah. that uh, yeah. Well, only time will tell what will happen. But I I'm I'm now aiming that in the next ten years I will I will come up with the same amount of hives I used to have. Mm -hmm. okay. And I I will come I will I will have more much more honey to ex extract uh, than today. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I'm going to get there. It's it's not impossible yeah, now. Yeah. So but um, 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 there's a lot of uh, work done but um, it is quite astonishing that so many decades has passed and, and not, the, not the research people, mm -hmm. uh, not any beekeeper, maybe bee weaver in USA, they are quite close because mm -hmm. they have been so long time treatment free and, and yeah. lots of good reports coming from their queens, they might be a little bit hot, they might have some Africanized bees in mm -hmm. them, but anyway, they are quite Quite near the situation where they can they can really say that we have a resistant stock in a commercial behavior, but otherwise uh, I don't know if um, if if the uh, 
uh, situation in, in countries um, where we don't have Africanized bees, it's, mm -hmm. it's so much, it, it might be much harder. I don't know. Yeah. And, and, uh, and what, what do you think about the feral population for, for start? To, to get some swarms? And to start with swarm, with local yeah. swarms, what do you what do you catch uh, in your? Well, it's very hard for me to tell anything about these feral swarms because we don't have them really in Finland. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. the, and these uh, original northern border was in Estonia, not Estonia and uh, south south ah, Sweden. So there was no bees. No bees in Finland no uh, until a man and introduced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so bees have usually. Uh, uh, no possibilities in, in, uh, in surviving in nature, but of course, when the climate is changing uh, and the winters get get warmer, maybe uh, uh, maybe, maybe there, there will be a feral feral stock, uh, maybe. But um, um, I think um, I think um, the main main um, if you are looking for feral hives, it would be important to to. To avoid those places where there are lots of beekeepers, because the yeah, yeah. hives are yeah, uh, probably escape swarms, uh, escape swarms yeah, from them, yeah. and and maybe you should uh, be um, looking at those hives a bit longer. Um, I think there's a project starting in, in uh, Sweden, or at least there's uh, something going on that um, you have a list of. Uh, People and list mm -hmm. of beehives around this whole country, around whole, whole, whole mm -hmm. Germany. So, so they are, uh, they, they are monitoring on the map. Yeah, yeah they are working on a map and monitoring uh, wild hives okay. in the forest. And they, they, the idea is to look for one wild colony long enough to be sure that they are really wild colony which has survived for many years. Mm -hmm. So that's a good idea, a good good way to to, to start a if you want to have, have these feral swarms. I'm sorry to introduce, do you mean Dr. Lang? Mm -hmm. The project, Dr. Lang? Yeah, I, I, I sent it you this... Uh, yes, I have two, two swarms I, I uh, observe. Okay. Yeah, in my yeah, area. Ah, okay. I sent it a um, mail in the Pesos uh, yes. internet forum. And, uh, yes, I now, now I don't, as I told you, I don't have time to follow this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I remember we discussed some, yeah, yeah, some, yeah. some time ago yeah. about some things. Uh, yeah. Um, that was that was a year ago or a year a year and a half, some, something like this. Uh, I remember from our discussion that you uh, said, and, and from what I remember, you always say that that the most important part is genetics. It's just uh, selecting genetics, as you uh, when we started, you said about uh, some some isolation yeah, mm -hmm. and and grouping in one place. Mm -hmm. uh, th that is uh, in our. Um, as, as our association is concerned, that is not possible because we live all over Poland. Okay. So, yeah. so we have uh, 500 kilometers from each other. So, okay. so we don't we don't have it. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, what what uh, what I what I may think I, I uh, I'm not sure of that because because I haven't researched it, uh, this. But but uh, that genetics is not only uh, important thing because mm -hmm. there are some. Uh, Local adaptation, mm -hmm. some microflora, uh, some mm -hmm. some uh, epigenetic factors like uh, I yeah. think uh, Eric I think was talking about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, How about this these factors? Because uh, I, when when uh, I started treatment free beekeeping, uh, I introduced uh, some queens that originated in your stock. Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, not di directly from you, but from a breeder from Poland. Yeah, yeah. And uh, some other colleagues uh, also took this the screens, mm -hmm. and they died uh, yeah, treatment yeah, free. Yeah. So and that's a long, long time ago. Uh, yeah, that was three years ago, I think. Yeah. Uh, I had them. Yeah. And you probably gave these queens five years ago, maybe. maybe. So, yeah. so this was different stock. I yeah, 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 yeah. But, but uh, still, it was this selected genetics. Mm. Uh, I had also some queens, uh, not directly, but but mm. uh, indir indirectly from Eric, Mr. Mm. Uh, my friend had some uh, queens from Cyprus, from from. Uh, Mr. Brown, I think, yeah, uh, Stephen Roger Brown, Roger White, yeah, uh, and from uh, Alois Wagner, uh, yeah, Wagner, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so we had this genetics that was selected before, mm -hmm. and 
the first generation they all died. Mm -hmm. uh, some uh, some uh, daughters, granddaughters, grand granddaughters survived, but this uh, first, which was the most pure uh, mm -hmm. genetics, they, they all died. Mm -hmm. Better better were these uh, queens that were locally adapted. Uh, okay. So so what do you think about this? Um, well, um, yeah, well, uh, of course, um, I'm a breeder. Yeah. I, I just, um, I try to make all parts uh, uniform. I try to uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I make all, all things yeah. the same to all hearts. I try to make situations so that I can, I can pick, pick the in individuals which are genetically better. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing I can do. Yeah. But if that is, um, that might be, um, how could I, as a breeder, do more? Yeah, prob probably you cannot do more. Yeah, that's. Yeah, yeah I, I'm just. I, I'm not. I'm not saying that these other uh, things are not affecting. Mm -hmm. But I, as a breeder, I can't do that. Yeah. But uh, what, what I'm referring to, uh, when you pick uh, the best queen, mm -hmm. it's your local queen. But yeah. if I get it, it it's not local for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. it's local for you. So, yeah. so I'm referring to this this yeah. uh, this factor. Yeah. But, uh, but where where the bees which you got from me, where they uh, they were not worse than others. All the all died. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, but, but you didn't find anything better in my my stock than the other queens you had. Uh, there was they were uh, well, they were different. They were different, mm -hmm. but I'm not saying that they are not good. I'm yeah. not saying. Yeah. Not, yeah. Don't don't but, but, misunderstand me. Yeah. I'm saying uh, that in, uh, when I uh, introduce some uh, foreign stock, mm -hmm. uh, I'm uh, introducing organism that is not locally adapted. Mm -hmm. That's what. Uh, what yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it is probably a very good um, point that local adaptation is is a good thing. But um, what is your local population? Is it a bees which have been treated? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, of course, um, well, um, well, I, I really can't say um, what should I do more when when I, I do this breeding job in a certain uh, Finnish environment, long winters and short summers and so on. No, the the end result which I get is is it this and if 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 um, I send these queens to other circumstances other environments mm -hmm. they they probably are not behaving in the same way there yeah. and uh, uh, of course you need adjustments and when I, I remember the time in the nineteen ninety when I first visited Paul Jungers in Luxembourg and brought mm -hmm. some queens from him. Uh, they almost died in the winter because they, mm -hmm. they made brood too much and they, they were... Yeah, the trolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah they, they, they were very strong hives in the, in the autumn, in, in spring, but just little, very little sugar yes. left. And so, so I had to adjust them to the Finnish, Finnish climate. Yeah. And uh, very, many, very often the bees from, from uh, Central Europe, they, they kept uh, and we got fowl brood in my area. Oh, okay because there is no American fowl brood in Central Europe. And just like John Kefu said, you can't, you can't breed a resistance yeah, when you don't have the this disease. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So it is, it is the only thing um, I can do as a breeder to, to try to do my job <coughs> best I can. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'm sure there are lots of um, other factors affecting and as we, as we just mm -hmm. discussed, uh, <coughs> This might be a problem which, which cannot be solved. Uh, I, uh, I'm not sure if that uh, was were the words of Kirk Webster. I think it, the, these were the words of Kirk Webster that when he introduces some queen that is promising, that is good genetics, like for example, uh, if we brought your genetics to us, the first thing we should do is the same summer, the same summer we introduce this queen, make as many uh, queen daughters as possible, uh, because uh, the first, the first uh, generation will probably die. Mm. Uh, but the next generation is uh, half local, yeah? Because, uh, so maybe this is the idea of, of, of uh, 
combining uh, selected material with with local genetics. Yeah, yeah. That, is, yeah. that is that is probably a good idea, and um, and uh, then maybe maybe this is why, uh, as you said about this uh, Italian example, mm. uh, this is maybe maybe this is uh, combining this this local with, with your genetics. Mm. This is why it made uh, this this genetics so good. Um, I think I think the the, the case in in, in in Luca Con simply uh, was that um, our bees, uh, you could compare that them with um, Saharensis bees from mm -hmm. from far, farther island, <laughs> which were bred, uh, which are living in a very remote and and, and, and isolated place mm -hmm. in in Sahara. And then there's another example of, of, of laser bees in, in uh, between Sweden and Denmark, the island mm -hmm. where there are black bees. When Ulf Grön made a, a crossing between Buckfast bees and these laser black bees, mm -hmm. he said that the, the, the F1 queens, they, were, they brought him more honey than he had ever experienced. Okay. So bees from a very uh, uh, isolated place, <coughs> laser, sarensis, my bees in, in <coughs> the overseas. Bees from a very remote, uh, isolated mm -hmm. place are crossed with another totally different stock. Mm -hmm. It brings a huge uh, hybrid power mm -hmm. in the first crossings, and that's probably what Luca has been seeing. Okay. So it's it's not something which is uh, it's not genetically uh, you can't get it into the next generation. They are yeah, good right. in the first one, okay. but of course you can pick pick some on some individuals that it's mm -hmm. not good for breeding if you want to make a crossing. But um, the the yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for, for your time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for, for uh, uh, accepting this invitation to, to interview. My pleasure. Thank you very much.